Before I get the lesson, Brother John, I apologize about that. I know I went through and deleted those, and I, I don't know. I guess uh, they say the uh, technology is wonderful, except when it's not. And remember, the computer is only as smart as the operator. And sometimes you do your best and you still find things wrong. But I appreciate Brother John's selection of songs. I know yesterday was a somber day in our country. And how all of those who lost their lives in the World Trade Centers at the Pentagon and in that empty field in Pennsylvania. 20 years has gone by. And I wonder, have we forgotten? Have we forgotten what took place? And I believe in a lot of ways, a lot of people have forgotten. A lot of people that are alive today Young people were not born. As a matter of fact, when I was talking to a young man yesterday, he said, Dre, I was five days old when that took place. Brethren, if we don't remember, we're doomed to forget. And I know that sounds strange. But that's life. That is how it is. And I hope as you came in the auditorium this morning, and I'm going to start doing this each and every week, on the table out in front is an outline of the lesson, and it's a fill in the blank for you. And there's an evening and a morning service are both on that sheet. Brother Costell read for us from the book of Psalm 103, the first two verses. And this lesson ties in to what I just mentioned. If you look at the last phrase in verse 2, forget not all of his benefits. Let me ask you, do you even know what a benefit is? Most of us, if we have worked in public work in times past, not only did every Thursday or Friday or whatever day you got that little check and, you know, they come to you with an envelope and hand it to you. But nowadays it's direct deposit. They gave you a wage for your work. I remember an elder in a church talking about benefits, though. And they were going to try to do everything they could do to keep or to get a young man to come work with them. And as we were talking, he said, Ray, he said, you know, there is the salary. But we also want to offer some benefits. We want to be able to provide for he and his family health insurance. We want to be able to provide for him and his family some type of life insurance. Or perhaps maybe, and he said, we, we've even talked about trying to provide some type of retirement plan. And this gentleman was a banker. Do you realize that if you receive benefits at your place of employment, that is generally equal to about half of your weekly paycheck? A benefit is something that someone offers that is advantageous or is something that will improve what you have. And when you think about what David, or the psalmist writes, and he says, forget not all of his benefits. What he is simply saying is for us to remember that everything in this world comes from God. In James chapter 1 and verse 17, James says that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Thank you, Phoenix. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Let me ask you a question. 
What kind of gift is not good and perfect? If it comes from God, it's always good and it's always perfect. Always. But not only does God provide all of the physical blessings of life, we also can go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 where it said, Blessed be the God and Father of Jesus Christ. And guess what is found in them? All spiritual blessings. Is there a difference between physical blessings and spiritual blessings? I hope we understand the answer is yes. The spiritual blessing that came through Jesus Christ is that by which we have hope for eternal life. Now I want you to think about that as I mentioned 9-11. We're living in a country that has forgotten that every good and perfect gift comes from God and that all spiritual blessings come from God. If we go back to our founding as a country, I will not say that our country is founded upon Christian principles, but our country was founded upon biblical principles. We as a country, guess what? We have forgotten that. Maybe it's not that we have forgotten, Maybe it's because people that are teaching our children are ignoring that fact. And it infuriates me when I read that people are trying to change the history of our country. When those individuals left Europe and wanted to come to America, when they left England, they were seeking to get away from exactly what people are trying to get us back into today. They wanted to be free from the Church of England. They wanted religious freedom. They didn't want to be bound to just the teaching of the Church of England. Brethren, we're bowing down to the worship of the federal government. And we're giving them the power that they don't have according to the Constitution. We better start fighting to take our country back. We better forget not all His benefits, the one God gives us. It is God who has given us the ability. He is the one who has blessed us to live, live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. If it were not by the hand of God, the United States of America would not exist. Enough of my soul. Let's talk about some of these benefits God offers us. Number one, let us remember and not be as some who act as God owes them. There are people who think God owes them something. I call your attention back to Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 11. You can read down through verse 19. Brethren, I'm not going to read all these scriptures. You have the outline. You have the, the, the scriptures that are listed. You go back and you look. But think about ten lepers. Ten lepers see Jesus. They see him approaching and they cry out to him, have mercy on us. Someone says, Brother Ray, that doesn't show that they're thinking God owes them something. No, that particular phrase doesn't. But that leads to what shows me the attitude that they thought they were owed something. There were ten, right? Someone helped me out. My memory sometimes gets a little foggy. How many came back to say thank you? One. One realized 
One realized and acknowledged that he was not owed anything. I suggest to you the other nine that didn't come back and take time to say thank you for the benefit of receiving healing. They thought they were owed something. It was exemplified in their ungrateful attitude. Well, how about today? Are there many people that you know that think they are owed something? Notice what Paul writes, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And I believe we begin in about verse 15. Paul writes through inspiration. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Remember where all blessings come from. God does what? He freely gives, does He not? He freely gives. But many people today think God owes them something. God has promised in the book of Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount. He has promised to give us what we have need of, not what we have want for. He talks about food, clothing, and shelter, does he not? God provide you food. Maybe it's not always what you want. Does God provide you clothing? Maybe it's not the finest. Maybe it's not a, a walk-in closet full of clothes. Maybe you have to wear the same clothes more than once a week. Does God provide you shelter? Maybe it's not the finest of houses. Maybe it's a one-room house or a two-room house. What determines your happiness? Is it because you think God owes you something? Or is it because you realize God's blessed you more than you even deserve? Because brethren, we deserve the same fate as those in the time of the flood. God owes us nothing. Yet he gives us everything. Don't forget his benefits. Number two, understand that he is the God of our salvation. He is the God who has provided for you and for me the ability to be saved from this world of sin and of sorrow. You and I, we are all guilty of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. Notice what sin does to us. It is sin that destroys us. What does Paul say in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23? And the wages of sin is what? Is death. But the gift of God. Oh, wait a minute. There's his benefit. It was a gift. The gift of God is what? Eternal life. It is salvation. It is the ability to spend eternity as Brother Joe prayed in his prayer. The hope we have of hearing God offer us and give us the reward of living with Him forever one day in the glory of heaven. It is the gift it is a benefit. It is something God did not have to do 
But the Bible says, for God so loved the world, what? That he gave his only begotten son. Brother, that's a benefit. It is the benefit of God that he provided for you and for me the salvation of our soul. And we know that we are saved and only saved by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 that the power of God is what? The gospel. And it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm thankful the second part's there. You know why? Because Greek is our heritage. To the Gentiles, you and I, if it were not for the blood of Christ and the power of the gospel, we would never be able to attain true salvation. But God, through Jesus, just like a rope, two strands, took Jew took Gentile and he wove us together through the blood of Jesus. Salvation is a benefit from God. Number three, you and I have the freedom to worship. Now I want to call your attention to our brethren in foreign countries. And, and, and maybe I ought to maybe I ought to ask Ted to walk from the back to the front and, and I could sit down. Because I believe Brother Ted could probably tell us in greater detail about freedom to worship because he works and serves in the mission field in countries where they're trying to suppress freedom of worship. Would that be right, Brother Ted? He's shaking his head. But I want to talk also about something, a country that we rarely mention. Anybody been paying attention to the news lately? You realize there's a country in the Middle East called Afghanistan. How many of y'all have heard of Afghanistan? Y'all know what's going on in Afghanistan? Do you really, have you really paid attention to what's going on in Afghanistan? The evil one is using the Taliban to go around and to execute those who are Christians. The church in Afghanistan has had to go underground because the government of Afghanistan, now controlled by the Taliban, has said, you cannot worship God, you must pay your allegiance to Allah. I hate to say it, but we have a lot of people in our country today that are within our own government who are trying to take away our freedom to worship by telling us and throwing little things out there whether it be communist, you want to call it communism, socialism, whatever you want to call it, they're trying to tell us that we're not going to be able to bow our knee to the God of heaven, the God who created us, the God who sustains us. They're trying to tell us you're going to bow down to this other God. Probably one of those gods that Paul saw as he walked through the city of Athens looking to his left looking to his right, looking at all those idols. Brethren, until I take my last breath, I will fight. I will fight to be able to worship the almighty God of heaven above. And I hope and pray that you will join with me that we never lose our freedom to worship. Because it is a benefit come from God. I want you to look around you this morning. I want you to look around this auditorium this morning. 
What do you see? And no, it's not your wife, it's not your grandsons. What do you see? You know what I see? I see a lot of empty spots that should be filled with people who have a desire to worship God. I'm glad you have the attitude of David who said, I was glad. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm thankful. We live in a world. We live in a world where worship, honoring, respecting, giving reverence to God has now become secondary instead of primary. We've allowed Satan to overtake us. We've allowed him to distract us from what's truly important. Rather than worship is a benefit God gives us, he gives us the ability to come together, to have fellowship one with another, and not just with everyone is here, but we, as we worship, are having fellowship with God. Remember Jesus, as he met the woman at the well at, at, at Samaria. You, you remember her? You remember what he said? He said, you know, or she said to him, you know, we Samaritans, we worship our gods, and you Jews, you worship your gods. And what did Jesus reply? He said, he said, lady, there's coming a day. There's coming a day when that will change. And then he tells her that God is a spirit, and they who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's not in the notes, is it? It's not, that's not in, is that, is that on that paper? That's not on that paper. Brethren, understand something. When we fail to worship, we're thinking God owes us something. How many people do you know who claim to be a Christian who fail to see the importance of worship? You see, God is worthy of our worship. John says in the book of Revelation chapter 4, Worthy is the Lamb. Why is the Lamb worthy? Because of what He did to allow us to have access to the Father. The Father seeks for us to worship Him. There's John 4, 23 and 24. But let's take that worship a little bit further. Let's go to point number four. We have been blessed with the church. And I know that all of us that are here understand the blessings of being part of the church. We understand that our Lord Jesus is the builder. He said in Matthew 16 that he will build what? His church. We understand from Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 that he purchased the church with his own blood. I want you to look at it this way. Jesus built the church and the nails that held, hold the church together is the blood of Jesus. Think about it. I want to tell you a story about a young man from Gibson County. Some of you are going to know who I'm talking about. His mother graduated from Freed Harbor. Head women, head girls basketball coach at South Gibson. His name is Brett. Brett has a rare form of cancer. He went through all this treatment. He finally was able to get a, a, a leukemia transplant. Brett is doing well. Don't want 
mislead you. Bread is doing well. And every day when his mother posts about Brent, and if you're on Facebook, you can, you can find that page called Brave Like Brent. Every day, she gives thanks for the church. She gives thanks because she believes and understands the power of prayer. And at the end of her post, she always says, would you pray for certain things to take place that day? Would many folks that I know, and perhaps you know, would be thinking God owes them something? She understands day by day, even though her young son is going through this horrible, horrible thing. She sees God doesn't owe her, but God continues to bless her with his benefits, which comes through her membership in his body. What do we owe the church? Do we owe the church our attendance? I know we go to Hebrews 10. And we look at verse 25. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the matter of some is. But brethren, go back and look at the verses that precede that. Where it says that we should provoke one another. That we should encourage one another. I want to encourage you. Maybe we ought to do... Maybe... Maybe, Brenda, we ought to start car showers for those who we know that should be here that aren't to give them encouragement to come back. Someone says, Brother Ray, what good will it do? Let me tell you, I'm like Rob that we saw in Bible class. It's not my judge to judge what good it might do. Because you know what? <coughs> If we could get one soul to come back because we've encouraged them to come home, I don't care how much money we spend. Is it worth it all? For what is a man profit him if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Bringing one back covers what? A multitude of sins. Oh. Is one important? But guess what? If that one comes back, they may begin to encourage someone else to come back. Just a thought. We also owe the church our contribution, our giving. Brethren, I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to say, and I promise I won't go over time. I'm happy to say that though we're small in number, when it comes to giving, we're big in heart. We, many congregations, through this pandemic, through this COVID that's going on, they've actually lost ground financially. Let me praise you because the South Jackson congregation We've been more generous and we've gained ground financially. Is that right, Brother Freeman? Huh. I'm not telling you to quit giving, though. Keep on giving. Keep on giving. We owe that. God doesn't owe us. We're blessed that he has blessed us beyond what we deserve. We also owe God to defend the truth, to defend the church, to stand up for what is right, to stand up for the faith. As Jude says, that we should earnestly contend for the faith in verse 3. And I've already mentioned this one. But we ought to pray for the church. Someone says, I do. Who's the church? 
Who's the church? Me? Okay. Are you the church, Kathy? Part of it. Chip, are you in the church? We are all members of the body of Christ. Therefore, we as individuals are the church. Should we pray for one another? I don't think there's a doubt that, that, that we pray for one another. I think we could probably go around around this, this, this room this morning and I could point at each individual and say, have you been blessed by the prayers of the church? Well, well Freddie, you're shaking your head. I know you've been blessed because we prayed for a long time for you to come home. And you came home. The church is a benefit come from God. And then lastly, and I don't know that I can say any one benefit is greater than the other because one benefit of God leads to another. And ultimately, the benefit of God is life after death. You go all the way back into the Old, the Old Testament and you look at the book of Job and you will see that Job even asked the question about life after death. How about Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10? What was Abraham looking for? Why was Abraham willing to leave what I would say was a place of comfort, a place of security. Why was Abraham willing to leave? Hebrews 11 says he left because he was looking for a city whose builder, a city that was made not with what? with hands. He was looking for something better than what he had. He was looking for the city that was built by the almighty God in heaven. I look forward one day to being able to talk to Abraham. I have a lot of questions about how he was able to do what he did. And the difficulty of how hard it is to leave and understand, brother. And, and I'll tie this to our Bible class. You know, Brother Rob mentioned a, a young lady that wanted to become a Christian and her mom, her mom got angry at her. Do you think Abraham's family got angry at him because he left them and went looking for that city? Oh, wait a minute. Guess what, Chip? Someone being angry at you for obeying the truth is nothing new. It's nothing new. Are we going to look for the city? Are we striving to get to heaven? And we know several passages teach us, and I have them on your outline, that you and I have hope for eternal life because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus died, was buried, three days later, early on a Sunday morning. You remember. You remember what happened? The ladies were going out to the grave site to finish the embalming process, and when they got there, what did the angel say to them? Why seek the living with the dead? Why are you trying to find someone who is alive and well in this empty tomb? Jesus' resurrection and overcoming death gives us the same hope to eternal life. Brethren, forget not all of his benefits. And I could list off this morning, and we could probably go another hour, and I could list off a whole lot more, uh, more benefits that come from God. But I hope these have stimulated your thought that if you're not a member of the body of Christ, 
that you will want today to obey the gospel, be baptized into Christ, so you can begin to enjoy those benefits. Or if you're here this morning and you've been baptized into Christ and you're like many today and you have forgotten about those benefits, you can come home this morning. Again, repenting, leaving the way of sin to begin to live the way of God. Confess your sins. Let your brethren pray with you and pray for you. Because guess what? We all want to enjoy those benefits together in heaven one day, don't we? This morning, if you're subject to the invitation, our prayers you come while we stand.